Welcome back everyone. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the XPath injection vulnerability. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to teach you the basics of the XML, like uh, how, how the XML is different than the SQL or any other data store or query language. Uh, how do you query inside the XML? How do you retrieve the objects and stuff like that? So that will give you more idea on when we actually uh, discuss about the XPath injection and its payloads, right? Otherwise, uh, your basics will not be clear. Uh, so please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already and let's dig into this uh, So the first one a uh, document uh, is equal to data store what I meant by that is uh, When you retrieve the data from the let's say SQL uh, like you know There is a database and you store the data in there here uh, XML itself is a document uh, and I'll, I'll show you in the next slide the example of how the XML document looks like uh, but the uh, the document is equal to data store. So if you want to uh, like you know store any information, I think in the previous or previous to previous video we, when we talked about the SOAP uh, vulnerabilities or the Vistal file, that was a, a example of the XML file. And you could see there are various tags, and with, within the tags you also store the value. So that is that is what the data is. Uh, and and when when you are as a user or attacker trying to attack the system, so you are trying to obtain that data stored in the document rather than like you know there is an s3 bucket or a database uh, it's a query language uh, so as simple as like any mysql or any other uh, uh, programming language out there uh, it's a simple query language uh, but, but uh, the question is what is the x path so the x path is it allows you to uh, search in the specific nodes as I said like it's made up of document and the document you have node root node and then you have sub node and then using the X path you can point exactly which node do you want to query and which data do you want to retrieve so uh, that, that's like you know instead of let's say going through line by line you can directly uh, ask your query I need a user uh, age whose name starts with a right so that's how like usually we do pretty commonly in this MySQL uh, using the query language, but that's the same thing you do in the XML using the X path. So that is what the X path is. Now, if you uh, look at this, uh, so this is like, you know, one of the example, let's say a breakfast menu. And you can see here, uh, the root node here, we can call it as a food uh, or the breakfast menu, then you have food and, and there is a uh, like you know big component for each one so food then you have name uh, these are repeated various attributes of uh, of the food uh, you have description calories and same goes for the other one now if you want to query let's say one of these let's say description or the price uh, your query will be something like okay slash food slash name slash price and it will give you all the prices information i'll show you some examples in the later video but yeah the x path is a treats xml as a tree so as we saw like you know the, there is a root node and then there is a sub node so it treats as a uh, as a tree uh, there is a root node so uh, like if you just specify like one for slash it's a it gonna point to the root node and then you can uh, point like you know you can traverse through the sub nodes using the food either name or price uh, you can also specify wildcard wildcard is very famous like uh, for for the attacker so when whenever you specify wildcard that means whatever the data you have under this node give it to me and then you can also specify uh, specific details so where you want let's say you want a, f a price of the food which name starts with the w so you can specify at in your query so that will give you a specific attribute type let's see some examples so it might get a little clear so if i let's say my query is slash 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 price so it's gonna return all the prices uh 595 and 795 and if i say slash food slash name is equal to b star so it's gonna go to food then go to the name and if it starts with the b then it's gonna return with the value so here uh, i'm gonna get belgian waffle but i'm not gonna get strawberry because it doesn't start with the b and then you can also uh, search with the at the rate so this is the at the rate type type is the attribute and as you can see in the calories type is equal to a and here's type is b so whenever it finds type value b then it's gonna give me the values back so uh, just make sure you understand this concept of how the XPath, like what is the XPath and what's the difference between the XML. There's also an XSC, uh, which we have uh, discussed in one of the earlier video. I have linked that into the description below. So be sure to check that out. Don't mix that up with the XPath injection. 
uh, and of course I'm going to show you the demo now so uh, just to make it clear uh, how is the XPath injection different than the uh, XSE uh, so this is one of the uh, uh, demo vulnerable application and as you can see uh, there is a section for XPath injection and it's an attack technique used to exploit applications that construct XPath so XML path language queries from user supplied input to query or navigate XML documents now we already saw how do you navigate between the XML documents so we're gonna now see uh, how you can create the query now this is no different than the uh, I guess SQL injection or any other injection text because as simple as what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try and and break the query or, or create a some sort of error in the query so I can uh, know exactly what is the backend looks like let's start with the uh, single quote here and let's see if it gives me any error okay uh, never save so here it's, uh, it tells me warning xml element xpath ill married predicted opt lamp HD docs. Uh, this just give me the like you know the path of my uh, installation but it doesn't give me any but it does say your supplied credentials are invalid but there is some sort of syntax error that we can see here right now if I let's say type admin admin and our, our goal is uh, is if you see here the below login form is using XPath to query an XML document and derive the account number of a user whose name and password are received from the browser so uh, first off we need to uh, so our goal is to find the account number uh, by uh, like you know probably able to bypass this authentication or, or guessing the username and password so I'm gonna try with username like admin admin and I think it says your supplied credential invalid let's say admin password and this time I'm, I'm gonna uh, capture this in burp to make it easier so let's send to the repeater and as you can see here uh, admin password let's send this uh, okay how do we know if we are locked in let's search for the account number if you have got any uh, no I think we haven't got the account number and we can also see it here your supplied credentials are invalid oh actually let me turn the intercept off <laughs> yeah so that doesn't work either so now what are we supposed to do is simple we're gonna try to make the query true because we don't know what the user or the password is and how do you make it so I'm gonna show you this real quick so this is the true function always returns the bo uh, boolean value true and uh, this is export section defining this uh, and there is also an example but as you know uh, or whatever you need to know is the true function always returns the true value so I'm gonna use that how I'm gonna to use it is of course first off I'm gonna I'm assuming the application is using single code so I'm gonna close it and now as we do it like you know supply the or, or tag or or statement and then write the true this will always return the true right now we also need to close the single code what if we close it here let's see so I'll copy paste submit okay we are getting the syntax error so this is not right what if I only write the true statement right so that will uh, make the query true but and what about we do just like this so whatever the value we have here or we can also type like a or something and let's see if this is bypassable no we are still getting the error that means we are still making some issues or we still have some issues with the syntax here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have another all tag I'm gonna say a equals to actually I can just say or and then yeah single quote and I'm assuming that there is a query in the back end which will complete the remaining uh, like you know remaining part so let's see if we can this works oh that worked so now uh, I guess the only user we had in the system was admin and this is our account number so that that way we achieved the goal of the expert injection so it's it's really uh, like you know straightforward whenever uh, so uh, when you're doing the pen testing there, there are a few things to keep in mind one you need to determine whether uh, the application is using like which kind of data store and that is something you can easily uh, observe like if it's using like you know some XML tags uh, sometimes you have also seen uh, in, in one of our previous video XSE 
that uh, we could find the reference to the external documents, uh, XML documents, or it's using some vulnerable parser. So that way you can figure it out. If you are doing a source code review, yeah, that's super easy. Uh, that way you can figure out if it's using the XML. And the next thing uh, you need to figure out what is the source. So is there a way that the application is taking input from anywhere the user input, right? If it's taking the user input, that's where uh, this vulnerability could, could uh, associate or, or you could exploit. And once you find the user input, then your next task should be, uh, is, is the application actually validating or sanitizing this input? And if it's not, then uh, clearly uh, you can cause this kind of vulnerability. Of course, you have to do some trial and error if you're doing the black box testing because you don't know what the application backend looks like. But of course, you can achieve that using, uh, like, you know, getting some practice. Uh, I would also encourage you to, uh, like, try this different ones, like XML bomb denial of service attack. Now, if you remember, I think we discussed this in one of our OWASP top 10 series uh, in the XSE, of course, uh, which I've also linked in the description below. So maybe you can look that as well. Uh, you can also try uh, XML external entity processing. So try that out. Uh, visitor enumeration, uh, we have recently covered it so probably uh, install this application on a local host and try it out i've also linked this application and the how to install guidance in the description below uh, and be sure to uh, follow us like you know, on the facebook where we post regular updates so go through this application try it out do practice probably that's that's the way uh, you can get better at it uh, so that's it uh, right now. Please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, put it in the comment section. If you have come across any interesting vulnerability, if you know different payload uh, for the XML, uh, then do let me know in the comment section so everyone can uh, learn from that. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next week.